Nobody here will ruin their life. Amen. Nobody here will waste their life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Until you key into that word. Until you key in into that life. Until you key in into that blood of God. Or the blood of Jesus. You are not saved. Your life, your soul is not saved. Remember what the Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and uh, chapter 12. Chapter 9, let's quickly go to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. He said that everything in the tabernacle is required to be cleansed by the blood. He said, and almost all things are by the law, purged by the blood. He said, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of the sin. I want you to take note of this following. And please take your note very copiously, even in the next session. Take notes what? Copiously. Seriously. Because it, like I always say here, it is those who take notes that will be noticed. It is those who take notes that what? Eventually be noticed. Without the blood, there is no life. Without blood, there is no life. Number two, without the blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the blood, there is no forgiveness. Number one, without the blood, there is no life. Number two, without the blood, there is no forgiveness. Number three, without the blood, there is no cleansing. Please understand this. You can be forgiven and not be cleansed. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm saying. You can be righteous and be leprous. You can be a king and still be leprous. And you get what I'm saying? You can be a pastor and be sick. <laughs> you can be attending church and your marriage is in chaos. You can be a broker and don't have a house. You can be a banker and be bankrupt. You can be a doctor and be sick. You can be a lawyer and don't have the answer. Did somebody get what I'm saying? So without the blood, there is no cleansing. Professors are sick. Pastors are in pain. Even pastors have marital problems. It's only the blood of Jesus that avails and cleans. Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. I want you to shout the blood of Jesus. You don't understand the implication of the blood of Jesus. Many of us just live our life as Christians just going from toe, toe and fro. You are just carrying your head everywhere. Please, I need you to understand that you have a weapon at your disposal. Like I said last week, the blood of Jesus is God's joker. You know when you are playing the game of card, you relax the you 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 keep the joker because once you put the joker on the table, the game is won. And at the application of the blood of Jesus, the game of life stops. When the devil is playing games with your marriage, when the devil is playing games with your finances, when you shout the blood, it gives way. Who am I? And nobody, and like I said to you, I was born in Mushi. And now preaching in Milton Keynes. The distance from Mushi to Milton Keynes was hedged by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Was what? Hedged by the blood of Jesus. My mom told my father, I said, let's go and throw this boy away. Let's throw him away. By faith prophecy, they believe that this boy has come to drain their wealth. Okay. If from the age of 1 to 13, if there are 13 Christmases, I think I must have spent nine of it in the hospital. I think my brother was here once to say to with record of medical, what are they? At least nine of those will be I spent Christmas on the hospital bed. But when the blood of Jesus spoke over my life, when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I begin to know what it is to begin to apply the blood of Jesus, to apply the name of Jesus, to apply the person of Jesus. From that time till today, sickness, 14 years in this country, I've never been in the hospital. Amen. Did somebody get what I'm saying? Somebody shout the blood of Jesus! Shout the blood of Jesus! Look, you can argue the blood, but you will suffer the consequences of not having the blood. You can argue anything Christian. You can argue anything in church. But I pity those who argue the truth. Because the truth is constant. The truth is what? Constant. Number four, without the blood there is no victory. Without the blood, there is no victory. I need us to speak very quickly because I have nine minutes, just a minute. Without the blood, there is no victory. The Bible says they overcame him. Even in heaven, without the blood, they could not win. He said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I see some of us 
It, almost the same set of people are repeating, uh, are giving testimony in this church. The reason why they have testimony every week is because they saw God do something. Some of us, the little God did, you, you are not bold enough or you are not seeing it enough to come and give testimony. That's why you don't have more. You don't understand what the power of testimony. You don't understand the implications of testimonies. Some of us are waiting for the big thing before we share the big testimony. Testimonies are duplicatable and testimonies are like virus. They multiply. Are you getting what I'm saying? As you begin to give testimony, God begins to do more. As you begin to give testimony, God begins to do more. I see somebody's testimony multiplying in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number five, without the blood, there is no strength. Or without the blood, war continues. Without the blood, war continues. The blood, the war in heaven was continuing until the application of the blood. Next. Without the blood system, mankind is doomed. Without the blood system, mankind is doomed. All blood form or sacrifice system in the Old Testament were all a pointer to the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. Because of the time, I will not be able to go back into it, but I showed us last week how to trace every of the blood covenant you see in the Bible back into the life of Jesus. Every of the blood sacrifices was pointing to the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Let's read together first, I mean John chapter 1 verse 2. You could see at this time that John was speaking ahead of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. Now, Jesus appeared as a person, but what John saw was a lamb. Are you getting what I'm saying? He appeared as a person, but what John saw by the Spirit, he said, behold the Lamb of God. That takes away the sin of the whole world. Let's quickly look at the Levitical blood system. First of all, let me quickly establish here that the Levitical blood system is a very bloody system. Very what? Bloody very bloody system. When you go through the book of Leviticus, all you need to do is just to read. You cannot go four or five verses without seeing the blood. You can't go one chapter. Without seeing the, the whole book of Leviticus is very, very bloody. <laughs> Are you get what I'm saying? The reason why it is bloody is because man's wickedness, man's sin became so much. Yeah, look, God keep having mercy. They were killing pigeons. They killed like, all kinds of things to atone for the sin of man. All the animals in the animal kingdom. This one that they're saying, let's save life, <laughs> tiger's life. Or we should save whatever. <laughs> if we were still under the Levitical system, there would be no animal. <laughs> because the animals will see human beings and you guys are singing, we are dying. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> that you will see a tiger like this, instead of the tiger killing you, they will just be fleeing. They said, because every animal was used as a sacrifice. The sin of man, from Genesis chapter 6, and let me say this to us, whatever the devil used to deceive Adam and Eve in the garden must have been a virus. And I taught us here that angels were created, and I'm, I'm not going to go into that already taught, for those of us who follow my Bible, the, the Bible teachings on Wednesday, when I taught about angels, I said angels are created and they are pentless. You know, they, they could only exercise their will once. What God gave to man was a test in the angels. Meaning that once they exercise their will once, to choose which way, they cannot repent. And you get what I'm saying? Hence, the devil could have gone back to God and said, okay, I'm sorry, he should forgive everything and let it just be. It cannot be. The one third of the angels that defected with the devil, they could not go back and repent. But it must have been a virus. And I said to us, why has, have I made that conclusion that it must be a virus? Some people say, hey, Apple, I don't know, but I believe it must have been something fermented. 
animals have been something that numbs his brain. One of the main reasons why you know it that God asked him, Adam, 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 where are you? He said, I'm naked. What has location question got to do with the state of Adam? Adam, where are you? It's only when you are drunk you start saying foolish things. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? We saw the same thing repeated after the flood. The Bible said Noah got himself drunk. Are you getting what I'm saying? The same thing was going on. It must have been something that knows the brain. Sin make a whole giant to begin to behave stupid. A president doing stupid things. A pastor, an archbishop, and yet having foolish thoughts. It's something to get on. Sin is a virus. And it's only the blood that has the proclivity to purge that virus of our system. And that's what Paul was saying. He said, I die daily. I die what? Daily. So we need the regular washing of the blood of Jesus to keep purging us. Because the Bible says that, he said, God said, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. He said, for the devil, the wicked one has been cast down into the midst of thee. And we saw in the book of um, Psalm, I believe it's Psalm 78, verse 24. He said, have respect unto covenant. He said, for the dark places of the earth is full of the habitation of cruelty. There are spirits moving around your streets that you cannot see with your eyes. There are demons that are attached to your street address that you cannot see with your eyes. It's only by the application and the invocation of the blood of Jesus that you can have victory over them. And what we're going to be doing this week, last week I asked us to go into every corner. Some of us, you have done it, and I believe you have your testimony. Some of us that you have not done it, if you are not doing it, you are going to go back home with your water as the blood. God's servant is here with strange anointing. And I believe that as you return home without rod in your hand, every serpent